Money in the bank is right around the corner, Anthony. Yes, it is. It's nearly payday. What I'm saying. Yes, it is. Um, so we figured, since we already did our money in the bank predictions, a little bit early, but you know, once to get ahead of the curve. Ahead of the curve. Do, um, we figured we'd still have a bit of a money in the bank themed segment this week, and Let's. we would discuss the best and worst cash-ins of all time, Anthony. Let's. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. Let's jump right in and do jump it. Jump right in. Right. Kicking off with the fifth best... <laughs> Cash in of all time. And uh, I think this goes down as... Um, I mean, it, it's it got to be one of the best, but I suppose it's the, the game setter, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Really? Mm-hmm. It's the first cash in, it's the cash in. Yeah. Right? So, you know, I kind of get why it's fifth. But yeah. it's still an awesome cash in. It sort of set the precedent for how the money in the bank can, can work. You know, this is back when money in the bank was a match at WrestleMania. And <laughs> just a, just paper. a glint in the Way McMahon's eye. Whose who's who's concept was it, actually? Uh, who's claiming I, Jericho, it, I think Jericho did claim is it Jericho? For it's a story Jericho was told where he said it yeah. was his idea yeah like you know I think he was once like a contract for a ball match and Vince yeah. was like we'll put it in a briefcase I was like <laughs> okay whatever uh, my idea now. <laughs> um, and I think there's truth to it like people people aren't really big on modern day Jericho which probably says that his gimmick is working actually but they're, they're like oh he's overrated it's like he's not he's trying to be unlikable and you currently don't like him so yeah well, for the audio listeners. Um, but yeah, it's so edge, this is... Edge cashing in on Cena. Edge cashing in on Cena. Mm-hmm. And this is, um, as I say, match happened at WrestleMania. I believe the cash-in was actually the following pay-per-view, whatever the fuck they called that one. It was quite soon after, but not the same night or any bullshit like that. I can't remember. Do you know what? I think it was actually quite far down. I can't remember. Um, I, I feel like it was quite it. far down the line. I feel like WrestleMania happened and then was this New Year's Revolution? So it would have been like the January or something? Yeah, okay, actually. But yeah. I kind of just feel like, even though, I just don't think people really understood yeah, the, this kind the of gravity. Yeah. The, what's oh. the word? The, what a game changer it could this be. Is, it's one of them where you could probably watch it now and be like, this is just typical cashing. Yeah. But like you say, this was like the bar setting, wasn't it? So it's mm. like Cena absolutely annihilated. Yeah. Nothing left. And then Edge comes in yeah. to fuck him over. And you're like, okay, this is what it's about. Well, this it. is what I think it was bank. billed at the time, wasn't it? It was like, you get a future um, championship opportunity. Yeah. So people probably thought he was going to come out yeah. one day and be like, we'll I'm going to fight match. you at this time. Yeah, yeah. But the fact he just rocked up after you being annihilated. He's like, like, we're having it now, bitch. Yeah. People yeah. were like, ooh, and, shit. Uh, and it's iconic for that very reason, mate. So I think mm. it has to be in the list. <laughs> Brother, ooh. I don't know why. <laughs> 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 sounded just like that but it does yeah, yeah absolutely iconic so deserving for a spot on this list absolutely. yeah it is which takes us to the fourth best cash in of all time come at me come at me I might be on the Liv Morgan Revenge tour but just shouting at everything maybe <laughs> maybe I was um, right I liked Ronda Rousey when she first came to WWE I think we all did in the second run couldn't stand her because she phoned it in we all did Phoned it in more than anyone I've ever seen in my whole life, right? So you can imagine. Phoned it in more than I did it during <laughs> the pandemic. You can. <laughs> nice. Um, you can imagine my how happy I was as such a Liv Morgan fan to see her capture the Money in the Bank briefcase that night. You can imagine how even more ecstatic I was when she cashed in on the same bloody night. And I think that was the right way to do it as well. It was. Really do. I think. And to be fair, for, for, the, for the women's side of the Money in the Bank, they do tend to cash in pretty quickly, whereas mm. the men tend to kind of hold it for a while and, you know, can't make the fuck, can't make the I mean, decision. You've got to know when to hold them. Can we? You know when to hold them. Oh, I know when to hold them. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, so I was made up, to be fair, that she won it, and then I was just like, no way, she's cashing in on the same night. No way. And it was just a roller coaster. I loved the cash in because you kind of thought, oh, fuck, Ronda's going to beat her because... It wasn't that straightforward. Ronda got her in an ankle lock or something, and it was like, "Fuck!" Um, so it just t- took me on the ride. Damn it! It wasn't. It wasn't the best pinfall because it was just kind of like a kick in the leg and then a cover. Well, like I would have yeah. preferred like a knockout move or something. But the fact is, she won. She beat Ronda Rousey, which everybody rejoiced. People around the world just, you know, yeah. in unison, just jumping up and down. And um, mm. yeah, I think this was the moment that kind of elevated Liv to that main event kind of. Top spot, yeah. and obviously, well, she been, won the title. Yeah, she's yeah. Been, but, yeah, but she's been controversial ever since. Like some people love her, some people hate her, but I think that sort of settled her as a yeah. a top top tier. Yeah. Well, I mean, literally, what months before this, maybe she 
kind of being the bloody girl in the bath with the lesbian love story with Lana and all. It's just like that they literally didn't like they very quickly were like, maybe that's what we meant. We don't know. <laughs> yeah. And you're like, so yeah. what is a gimmick? Exactly. And then it was kind of like, well, we'll pair her back up with Ruby for a bit. And it's just yeah. So it was nice to kind of see her go out on her own and kind of establish herself. So uh, yeah, well, come at me now. fourth on the list. Speaking of. No, that doesn't work. Anyway, <laughs> number three, Carl. Number three. And it seems that uh, Cena's always involved in these. Why is that? <laughs> well, number three. For every reason that I said Edges was great, this is the opposite, but it's still fucking great. Yeah. Right? But this particularly works with Rob Van Dam. So this is Rob Van Dam and his catch-in against John Cena. Yes. Now, the, the, way, the reason I say it's opposite is because this was not out of nowhere unexpected at the end of a match, nothing left. This was, I'm going to fucking go for you. I'm going to go for you at this particular pay-per-view and it's going to be on my fucking terms. And that was how he did it. And this was unique because we were kind of settled in and we were used to how money in the bank works. And he's like, no, I'm not, I'm not playing that game. Yeah. We're going to fight. We're going to fight at, uh, what pay-per-view was it? I know it was e- when ECW. Yeah, one Night Stand, Brand. It? One Night Stand, thank you. Um, so it's like, we're going to fight. It's going to be at One Night Stand. It's going to be on my turf. And I'm going to fucking take your belt. Yeah. And I fucking, it works particularly for RVD. In yeah. the scenario, and it, it was a fucking yeah, brilliant, yeah. brilliant, brilliant cashing. It's like it's a massive baby face move, and as you say, like the fact it was on his turf is like just the icing on the cake because mm. he could have just cashed in on him um, at any point in time when he yeah. was down or whatever. But he could have been opportunistic, worse. couldn't he? He's but... dragged him into the fucking what do you call it, the bear pit, and being like, you know, yeah, that'll work. Th- you know, these fans are gonna beat the shit out of you for me, so it'll be yeah. easier. So, I, I, do you remember that night? Yeah, they hated him. They hated Zena. Fucking throwing and his t-shirt, everyone throwing it like, back. Historically, always over, but they, yeah, they, yeah, they, they did not like it. It was such an ECW crowd. Yeah, and the and, fact, the fact that he won it as well. Do you know yeah. what I mean? It's, it's the R- the RBD story is a shame. Like I was, I was a big fan of Rob at one point, but then obviously after winning this, he got kind of busted for like the the weed and all that, didn't he? And while he was both WWE and ECW champion, it was just like ah, game over for him. Like he let the company down. So, um, it was a shame. But this moment, like, definitely. Could have springboarded him to superstardom, I think. But yeah. fantastic cash in, and yeah, as Indeed. you say, it was it was different in the sense that it was announced ahead of time as opposed to just that opportune thing. But the yeah. the, the way he'd done it, I'm like on yeah. my fucking. I say it's such a baby face move, isn't it because you wouldn't even blame a baby say baby face for being opportunistic. No, but it's such a thing, isn't it? Of going, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna wait till you're down mm. and go for you. Like I don't know, it has a charm to it. This yeah, really no, it definitely did. Um. So the number two spot, Anthony, it's got to be Dolph Ziggler. Gold Ziggles. Um, the Monday Night Raw after WrestleMania, and uh, at the time Alberto Del Rio. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh yeah, weirdly seen not involved in this one. Um, Alberto Del Rio was the champ, and he was a very meh champion to say the least. But I don't think there's been many pops that you know I've heard certainly that were as big as this one. And it's mad now looking at you know he's not even with the company anymore. He's with TNA, and they just seem to not do anything with him but mm. the pop he got that night was fucking almost Austin-esque you know what yeah. I mean like war after me yeah he's always had so he's always been so close to, to, I know. to just popping off I know but just, yeah, just hasn't worked crazy, for him but I'll never forget that his music hitting the fans going ape shit and just him Big E and AJ walking down and just being like oh shit and then again it was um like you thought oh he's gonna he's not gonna do it because Del Rio getting you just like no no it's just I love the cash in that isn't just easy someone's yeah. already out and he hit you with one move and pin it's like oh no you think you're gonna lose it and it takes you on that little a little journey just in those kind of 30 seconds or whatever but yeah, yeah love this one um love it and it's a shame that yeah he didn't really go on to do much with it after this and then just kind of fizzled out unfortunately but yeah I think this will you know if you ask Nick you ask old Nick Nemeth what's probably some of the top moments in your career Old Nick Nemeth. <laughs> old, old Nick Nemeth had a <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, this has got to be up there for one of his career highlights for for sure. And um, yeah, I thoroughly enjoyed right. it. So yeah, and it's tough on this because as good as it was, there was one better, Anthony. There was reveal it, and you know what? Do we even need to reveal it? Because I think everybody knows what the best cash in ever was. Hit it, Carl! <laughs> Bam! Heist of the century. Heist <laughs> of the fucking century, Carl. Because this, this is mad. still talked about to this day. And you know the mad thing? And this is maybe a matter of opinion, because some people will come out and be like, no, everything's well plotted out story like that. This was not fucking planned. No. This was not fucking planned. This was reactive. But this is proof that it doesn't matter if you're course correcting or reacting. Sometimes you can make fucking magic. Yes. And this was it right here. The fans were fucking 
just livid with the whole fucking Roman Reigns Brock Lesnar match. Yeah. It was just getting a shit WrestleMania night. main event. It was just an awful down the building. fucking night. <laughs> and we were ready to go home and be pissed off. Yeah. And then Seth Rollins saves the fucking day. Yeah. No wonder he became the Monday Night Messiah because <laughs> this was him saving the fucking day. Do you know what though as well? Like yeah, as you pointed out, what a call by Michael Cole, heist of the century. You know what I mean? Because it, it was yeah. just like holy shit. Because indeed, this was unique in its own right. As, um, as you've said with a couple of the other ones, is the fact that it wasn't like wait until after the match or start on a match impromptu. He just entered himself into just a match and made it into it, a triple threat. Yeah. Like that's what a risk. Yeah, exactly. You think about it. Yeah. It's like it's ballsy as a move as yeah. well. But it was it was such the right call. Yeah. Like they didn't plan. I, I don't care. I don't care. I don't care if anyone argues <laughs> me. They did not plan on this. Kate it was Bates just. It's a lie. It was just like <laughs> no, no. Th- this isn't working. The crowd aren't happy. What do we do? This is what this was. But they made some fucking magic, yeah. and it fucking worked, and it was brilliant. So yeah. this, uh, this, it was it was immense, wasn't it? And the trouble is. You'll never do better. That, so that is we can't problem. have good money in the banks anymore. Like this was the dem- <laughs> this was the demise of money in the bank, yeah, wasn't it? It really fair. was. And like, I, do you know what? It came nowhere near as close or nothing like that. Like, don't get me wrong. But as much as it pained me, I didn't mind the Damien Priest cashing this year. No, no. The way they did it and stuff it was decent. But, but, but this is always the case, though. You're never gonna go. Wow, that was amazing. You're gonna go. Yeah, no. Yeah. Exactly. That's it. The bar set so high now. It's just they can't. <laughs> unreal. But, um, but you're right. Damien's wasn't a bad one. No. But it's never gonna be on this list. No. And it's not on the list because I love Drew and can't can't do my boy like that. That is true. Um, that is true. So they were our best five cushions. So let's flip the script a little oh, bit. Oh, okay. Let's go with the worst five, right? So Braun Strowman cashing in on Roman Reigns. Now this. Is like the RBD one, but gone terribly wrong. <laughs> so this is Braun Strowman's such a big man, and he's like a train. He doesn't need to jump Roman Reigns to get. He's going to announce his match ahead of time. He's going to tell Roman when he's going to fight me. him. <laughs> and um, yeah, you know. So they announced this match: um, Hell in a Cell, um, Braun Strowman and Roman Reigns, Went well, and it? it's going really good. And then what you do? You have Brock Lesnar. Get involved, rip the, the door off the cage, beat both of them up. And how does the match end? How does the Hell in a Cell match end? No contest. Which we didn't know you could do. Actually. Yeah, in a Hell in a Cell? Yeah. Hmm. Mm. Uh, which then ultimately means, well, Braun didn't win, so he's lost his money in the band opportunity, but he didn't lose. So he didn't... also won it, kind of. So what happened? You know what I mean? <laughs> this for me was, again, just a classic example of. Like, they don't know what to do with the money in the bank anymore. It's become a staple. Like, we've argued it's almost like this is one of the big four now. It's mm. like Survivor Series hasn't been it for a while. I totally agree, yeah. Um, I mean, even SummerSlam, but I suppose now they're making it two nights, it kind of has to be. But money in the bank is kind of one of them. But it's just one of them concepts that's kind of just really it's running out of ideas, isn't it? And yeah. this was a classic example of that. Um, Braun Strowman wasn't as over as they wanted him to be. It would be less frustrating, though, if the Hell in a Cell didn't end the way it did. Well, yeah, exactly, but it's just, I don't know, it's just well, one of them. They, they were convinced Braun was a thing for a while. I mean, they did make him champion as well. Yeah. Like, brief, that was, I um, want to say briefly, it was actually probably longer than I remember. It, it but... was the, the COVID thing, wasn't it? It yeah. was meant to be um, Spear versus Spear, yeah. it? Goldberg versus uh, Roman. But and then just they, into they swapped it to Braun. Bill versus Braun. Yeah. Mm. But yeah, so this one just really annoyed me, the fact that, I mean, just the, the Hell in Cell finish was bad enough by itself, but the fact that it was just a what a shitty way to, to do it. Just no contest and that's it. It's over with. Yeah. In other words, we didn't really have a plan. Didn't want to give anyone else the belt, so we just need to get rid of it. Yeah. So, so. number five. That was that. Aye. Aye. So Carl, speaking of not really having a plan. Yeah. This is probably I wouldn't say the start of, but this is where the fuel for the whole super Cena stuff comes from and the fact that like there was a point when people were kind of getting pissed off with Cena because you know, stars were getting buried and it was always a detriment to Cena. Like, and one of the main sort of epitomes of that was like just burying the whole Nexus in one pay-per-view. Uh, but this is is sort of another example of that where mm. it's like every part of this cash-in should have been... They, sorry, for those who are watching and listening, Damien Sandow uh, mm-hmm. trying, to, trying to cash in on Cena. Trying. Um, this is the issue is that this probably could have gone down as a decent cash-in. Maybe not in the list of best by any means, but the fact that he didn't fucking win. Yeah. Like, the whole thing was just disappointing yeah. because he was so over with the crowd and it was like, no, we can't, we can't have Cena. No. 
I was like, why? Why can't we? Like this, they should have just pulled the trigger on this. Yeah, they should have. He was. He was. Re- I know it sounds weird saying it now because mm. people are like Damien who, but like, come on. Yeah, he he was. He well, was big. Yeah. he was big at that point. He, well, exactly. was, he was super popular. He was, he was big enough for them to to think, well, we're going to give him the contract in the first yeah, exactly. place. But then whether it's politics or what, like the fact is as well, every other money in the bank cash in where they beat someone down, it's been enough. You know what I mean? But not for Super Cena. Because he beats him down before this, then announces I'm going to cash in. Yeah, and he proper beats him down as well. Yeah, and then it turns into like a fucking 10-minute match and Cena just beats him. So, yeah. Ugh. Just, uh, brother. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, yeah, so just for me, this the result was kind of infuriating here. Yeah, and to be fair, after this, it, like that that was the end one for Sandow. You just kind of... Yeah, kind of. Not in for him, yeah. and then it's gone. Was this after Miz Dow? I don't know I if, remember if he got relegated. I, I can't feel like it must have been if, the, if everyone was, he was making, that much. He was making like shit gimmicks into gold, wasn't he, for a while? Mm. Very yeah. soon. That, that whole stunt, stunt double thing was, was fantastic, wasn't it? But yeah. Do you know what else? The one saving grace of his Money in the Bank run was I love the little leather Money in the Bank yeah. case. It fit him really fair. well, didn't yeah, it? Yeah. You know, the little scholar and all that. Yeah. Um, briefcase wanker, to be fair. But <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it just. Frustrating. Frustrating one, that one. Indeed. Third on the list of worst Money in the Bank cash-ins of all time. Oh, Thunderdome days. This is a whole fucking thing with Otis winning it, then Otis making it a lunchbox, and then it's not a lunchbox anymore. They're going to fight over it in court with The Miz. The Miz gets the thing for fucking no reason. And then they have the audacity to have The Miz cash in on Drew McIntyre and beat him. Only for him to lose it, like a few days later. I think I actually wrote down. Like, I have eight no days? idea. Was it a week? Yeah, eight no, fucking days. No idea. What they were thinking with this? I I know they put themselves into a fucking shit corner with Otis, right? But do you not trust Otis enough to cash in on Drew then? Well, evidently not. Because what was the point in the Miz one? Like I, the court thing still pisses me off to this day. Especially, and this is no offense to JBL, but JBL was the judge. Why was JBL the judge? Why did anyone take that seriously yeah. and go, "Oh yeah, well the contract's his now"? Yeah. Like, who made that rule? Exactly. Um, but like the whole thing was just infuriating. Like, and I think was this the win that gave them his double fucking thingy status, double Grand Slam status, or whatever? Oh, it might have been actually. So I, maybe that's the just reason they did box. it. Yeah. 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 But, no, I think you and, and, and I love them as, I, I always, I always say I love them as, yeah. I think he's fantastic. This is not one of his career highlights. But to, to have him beat Drew, then lose the belt eight days later to Bobby Lashley, to then have Drew versus Bobby anyway. And just then, confusing, right? Yeah. And then, yeah, yeah the whole thing was just fucking stupid. Screwy. Um, fucking one, screwy. One of the low points of the pandemic era, and there was a couple, you know what I mean? And, Probably 100%. the only one probably below this was the um was this was this even pandemic here? It must have been the uh the zombies. I think the zombies the might tie in. I feel like they could have done that in front of crowds. But yeah, this was um this was this was pain. Yeah. This was pain. Low point of the pandemic era. And as much as I love them is, it was just what were they thinking? I agree. Couldn't agree more. Second on the list. What are you looking at here? <laughs> it's a wild Baron Corbin and a wild Juniper. <laughs> <Jennifer. laughs> <laughs> Whose ass is that? Um, uh, yeah. So that's a segment. <laughs> <laughs> Why not? <laughs> <laughs> so again, this is another scenario where scene has evolved um, to everyone's detriment. So this is—is uh, uh, is this like a random SmackDown as well? Yeah. Yeah. So that that says a lot. But uh, this is Baron Corbin trying to, attempting to cash in on Jinder Mahal. Yeah. Um, but I think, and this is no disrespect to Baron because this is quite early on in his main main roster run, mm-hmm. uh, and he had veterans in there with him. Jinder not being one of them, obviously, but mm-hmm. like it just felt so clunky as well. For like he's waiting for his cue from Cena, and he's looking around for Cena, and then he kind of runs over and punches Cena, and it's like, <laughs> why were you distracted anyway, right? <laughs> and the whole thing's just sort of a shit. But it's it's such a Cena's caused us some sort of distraction to him. And then Jinder quick gets the quick pin. Oh, that's it. That's that's all she wrote. It's like, and it's like ding ding ding, punch, roll up, one, two, three. Yeah. Okay. I was it just it smacked of we we give him the briefcase, but we actually kind of don't want him to to have the briefcase, so we're just gonna get rid of it. Yeah. This is one of them things where it feels like we like, we've done the pay per view now, but we don't actually have a plan, so we're just gonna fucking deal with it. Mm. I don't know sometimes you need them to lose, but there was no real. This was just a very quick. Let's get rid of the briefcase, so it's not a thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know why they did that to Baron to be honest no and I, I feel for Baron I, I know you 
you feel quite hard done by on his behalf the way he's kind of been treated and stuff like that. I, but I, I think he's just he's the facts. Are, he's a massive company guy because he yeah. does what they ask him to do. He never complains and he just fucking mm. works his ass off. His most recent feud, the last time I saw him, right? Not most recent because he did a lot of stuff on NXT, but last time he was on the main roster, I remember, and he had a feud with Shinsuke Nakamura over his own crown, which was stolen from him. And you're like, why is that even fair? This is, yeah. Like, the, this is the thing with him, though. Like, I, I, he seems like a sound guy as well, like, um, like behind the scenes. Hell of a chef as well. Yeah. Fucking love seeing his cooking steak, man. Danny. Oh, cook man. Steak, that guy. Um, but yeah, just every time he's given the ball, it just, just doesn't happen for him. No. Unfortunately, money in the bank stuff. It's kind of like a like a Nick Nemeth again, isn't it? Yeah, to be fair. But it's like so close to. to did I say the right Nemeth? Yeah, I did. Um, <laughs> I'm not used to using his real name. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so close to something being there and something happening, but it just doesn't quite hit. No. Yeah. Um. So yeah, it's it was a it's a shame for Baron, but yeah, this was this was awful to be fair. But yeah, Cena involved again. Which takes us to the number one worst Money in the Bank cash-in moment of all time. I just want to say for the record, you know what, I'll let you say your piece first, Tom. Anyone see me soapbox? Anyone? Get on. Oh, there it is. Get on that thing. <laughs> right. Winds me up, right? I know. It's like when we were talking about the list for this, right? I didn't even have it on here because I fucking blocked it out of my mind and you went, oh, this one's not even going to be on here. I'm I was talking, surprised you were bringing it on. I'm talking, of course, about Austin fucking Theory cashing in on Seth Rollins, right? I like Austin Theory. I think he's got some fucking future potential, that kid, right? I really do. I don't. You win the money in the bank. Mm-hmm. The fucking biggest prize is a blank contract inside it. You pick your moments, you cash in whenever you want against whoever you want, yeah? I kind of don't actually understand how that works because there's, there's a contract inside. You have to, like, before you run out and attack someone, you have to write their name daily quick. Otherwise, it doesn't count. Anyway, don't get that bit. But, right, you've got a contract in there that lets you get a championship opportunity of your choice. Why did you pick the United States Championship? I know you're going to say, well, he tried to cash in on the... Fuck that. No, look, here's Fuck the thing. That. Here's the thing. Why not put up the 24-7 title at this point? I understand. Waste. I understand where you're coming from. Waste. In the sense of, like, Wait. <laughs> he couldn't he, like his logic made sense to me because he couldn't get near Roman Reigns right and I can't even remember what the other belt was doing at the time yeah but no basically he, he was struggling oh, Roman would have been yeah, he, no, no he was on Old and Bow no there must have been another belt I don't know either way right he was struggling what the fuck was going on then? he was struggling to cash in right mm. uh, so he thought well I'll use my opportunity and I'll cash in for the US title and I, I, that made sense to me However, what I will say is there doesn't seem to be any rules to Money in the Bank. Mm. So storyline-wise, like, you can... As long as you've got a referee and an opportunity, you're good to go. Mm. So th- he could have ran Roman the fuck over, right? I mean, to be fair. And then... Well, no, seriously, kayfabe-wise, he could yeah. have hit him with a car and then gone, right, ref, come on. Yeah. And, and got the pin. So there's technically nothing stopping him, really. Yeah. So I, I kind of get your point. I just exactly. think they weren't creative enough with the story. Why didn't you hit Roman with your car, Austin? No, but huh? the point being, if you're creative enough with your storytelling, there mm. should be an opportunity. So I understand your frustration that they've, they've actually wrote it so that he couldn't get near the title, yeah. which in itself is a bit daft. But, but this, this I didn't is... mind the cash-in because I didn't want him to be champ, and I think the US title suited better, so it made sense to me. But this is WWE dropping the ball, like, at the highest level, isn't it? Because... Around this time, Austin Theory was like Vince McMahon's little protege, wasn't he? And that yeah, was the storyline yeah. and stuff, right? Taking selfies with him. Exactly. And then... videos from him. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> what is that? Um... <laughs> Sorry, right. Tom. So this again goes to show like, well, okay, we'll put it on Austin Theory. He, he clearly had no, like, it wasn't like, well, Vince had stepped down at this point, so they were like, or well, whatever, was it? Um, mm-hmm. So it was kind of like, well, they clearly didn't have a plan then. What are they going to do with him? So the fact that they... I just it winds me up. If you, if anybody had a, a fucking money in the bank, like contract to cash in for any prize in the business, why would you pick a, a mid card title? I get you. Had he already won it at that point anyway? Before? No, no, I don't think so. Well, he won it right. Well, anyway, to add to this, he fucking didn't cash in. He he failed his cash in. Didn't beat Seth with his cash in. I mean, that's yeah. particularly insulting. Yeah. And then. He won it three weeks later in just a random match. What if he'd have gone for the IC title? Would you have been happier? No. That's the work, my, 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 I don't my give a fuck. Book. 
You've got the, the you could be the guy, not the workhorse guy. You gotta be the guy. And he just fucked it up and it was stupid. And I never want to see anybody challenge for a title that isn't the main title again. You hear me? You hear me? <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah, I'll get okay. off my soapbox now, but just before we wrap things up, makes me think. This year's money in the bank. Yeah. What are we thinking? What who's gonna win or who's gonna how it's gonna cash in? Well what's happening? Both. So who do you think is going to win the men's and do you think they're going to actually... So I champion? think they're going to put it on Jay. And do you think Jay's going to actually become world champion? No. Okay. Then for the women's? Tiffy? Mm, Tiffy's probably the best shout. Yeah, I'm going to go with Tiffy. Okay. And does she become a world champ? I think... What brand is she on right now? Smackdown. Yeah, I think possibly so then. Bailey. I think possibly then, yeah. Although you can't go after any, can't you? But Yeah, but I yeah. think I, I wouldn't expect them to, to go after Liv because there's a story brewing there. So I think possibly, yeah, she could. Okay. Cool. What are your thoughts on the, on the men's? So let's go back to the men's because um, I don't think, I think Jay will be a failed attempt. I think he'll probably, they're hoping to just have a briefcase with Yeet Rose on it and <laughs> cash that in. Lot, cash that in for like um, a year. I could see, him, I could see it being Jay and getting them giving him it, to be honest. Really? And Against... I, w- I wouldn't be happy. Oh, Damien. Yeah. You don't think he's going to go back towards the bloodline? I don't think so. I know it's on Cody at the minute, but, yeah. you know, things will happen. I don't think so. But, I mean, I'd love it. I'd love him to give it to Drew, obviously, because that would make more sense. I don't want Jay to be champion. I don't think he is main event. So, wouldn't it be great if he got it? And then, out of nowhere, he yeah. cashes in on Cody and fucking rejoins the bloodline. Okay, yeah, that would be pretty I'm being cool. like, Nah, I'm top dog. That'd be pretty cool. But you won't do that, will he? Because no, they won't. But imagine, imagine the imagine the fury of people being like, "He cashed in on Cody. This is unfair." I'd I'd be behind him as a champ just for that. Yeah, but no, I think it'll be either. (laughs) I I think it'll be Jay. But if not, I'd prefer it to be Drew, and I prefer him to win it. Obviously, women's side. I I want it to be Chelsea Green, and I think I think she'd lose. Right. Yeah. (laughs) Everyone, put the camera on me because I'm saying stuff. Um, just kidding. Like you're Samantha. Uh, <laughs> oh no! Oh, oh no! Stands oh. everywhere. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I, I'd give it to Chelsea Green, and I think it's fine if she didn't. If it was unsuccessful, to be honest, that yeah. would it would be perfect for her character. So, them's be my thoughts. And wow, this segment went longer than I thought it would do. So, let us know. Did we miss one? What's your favorite and least favorite money in the bank cash in of all time? Let us know in the comments. While you're here, make sure you check out the Hot Tag Foundation. You can follow them on Instagram. They are doing some awesome work at the minute, collecting wrestling memorabilia at local wrestling events here in the UK and donating things to um, children who need it. Indeed. If you live in the UK, get involved. Indeed. Um, and you know what? You, you can't live... even see me hand. Let me try that again. Okay. If you live in the UK, get involved. <laughs> it's too high. It's too high. I can't do it. Just get involved. Uncle Sam over here. Um, and even if you don't follow them anyway, support their cause. And uh, if you listen to this, please give us a good old five stars, download the episode. And if you're watching, like, comment, subscribe, and we'll catch you on the next one.